starting from an initial condition, which is actually also obtainable from the same equation. So, so we, we were looking at the evolution equation, d theta dx, that's the increase in the thickness, in the momentum thickness of the boundary layer, that after we model, after we fit on top of data, right, we, we looked at the Faulkner scan family of solutions and figured out how this term, t minus 2 plus h times lambda, which involves t and h being unknown or unclosed terms. We model all of that as a, as a function of lambda and obtained this linear relationship. The linear relationship is not something derived that can be derived analytically, it's really a fit from the data, right? Call it machine learning if you want. Uh, so, so we get the relationship and we plug into the equation, we get uh, basically for ease of solve, we solve the evolution of theta square. And, uh, uh, and this also gives us an initial condition when ue is equal to zero. So when ue is equal to zero at the stagnation point, basically in order for the derivative to be finite, we need the whole parenthesis to be equal to zero. That gives us initial condition. So from that initial condition, we discretize the ODE, right, using a backward difference method, and we obtain a linear, actually, algebraic equation to solve. So that's the task we are left uh, last time. So this is what we started last time. We used the, the same exponential function, one minus exponential, as my external velocity, right? So all the way I have a favorable pressure gradient and uh, uh, but at the end as x goes towards 10 uh, the external boundary layer uh, the external flow velocity tends to become more and more uniform and dUE dx is just a simple derivative of the velocity profile. I took a new is equal to 10 to the minus 5 and uh, from the fact that the right hand side has to be exactly zero to prevent uh, infinite growth of the boundary layer, I computed the value of lambda zero. And that is my initial condition. So, so I backed off from lambda zero, the initial theta square. If we run this, we have an initial theta square equal to that. And if you take a square root, uh, it's about one millimeter thick, that's the initial thickness of the boundary layer, right? If we have a, if we have a DUE DX equal to one, that's like, if you go from leading edge to one meters, the, if you go from leading edge to one centimeters, the velocity goes from zero to one centimeter per second. So if you have a flow like that, the initial thickness is like one millimeter, all right? So then the next task is for us to actually put in the differential equation. Okay, so let's put a vector theta uh, to record the whole boundary layer thickness. So initially it's a square root of theta two, right? And let's do a loop for i goes from two to the length of c because we already have the first station, right? And uh, my discretization is going to be basically I want to first compute the green part that is uh, uh, that is the the right hand side in this equation so that involves all the knowns all the knowns that includes this part and uh, uh, this part so okay so my green part right hand side is equal to theta 2 divided by dxc, right? So I didn't calculate my dxc. dxc is, let's say, just a c2 minus c1, all right? I have a uniform uh, grid. And the plus point, sorry, <coughs> point 0.225, that is one of the coefficients we fit on the linear polynomial. And uh, uh, the fitting data is from the Faulkner scan solutions, right? All of these are coming from the governing equations. We didn't touch any experimental data or anything in this whole derivation. Okay, so times two divided by, uh, sorry, two times nu divided by ue at i. 
So that's my right hand side. Okay. And I need to divide the right hand side by what is in this blue uh, parenthesis to get um, to get the new theta square. I think I have an, uh, a slight mistake here when I'm calculating here. The new actually cancels with this new, so this new actually doesn't exist. Uh, what should be instead is actually a UE at i plus 1 here. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So so my uh, my new theta 2 should be equal to right hand side divide by 1 over dx c uh, plus 2 times now this is 2.65 uh, divided by ue of i uh, times due dx at i right so then right it was i plus 1 but uh, what i did is i had i looping starting oh, from right. 2 to the end so it's actually I should have written this as theta i minus theta i minus one, and the whole thing would be uh, would be replaced by uh, i instead of i plus one. So, uh, in the for the theta i, should it be i minus one? Yes. Yeah, so if I replace all the i plus ones by i, then all the i's becomes i minus one. That's right. right. All right. Okay. So. My thetas is equal to thetas uh, square root of theta two. Okay, so now I, now I have the entire boundary layer profile. The code seems to wrong, and let's actually plot my c and the thetas. Right. Okay, so that's what happens. Uh, initially, I have a one millimeter thickness. It grows. And uh, at the end, I have about like six millimeter boundary layer thickness, momentum thickness, right? The uh, the displ the displacement thickness is going to be several times thicker than this, multiplied by the uh, boundary layer shape factor h, which can also be computed just uh, from the uh, the lambda, right? So once you have the theta, you have the lambda. Once you have lambda, you can go back to the the curve we have. H, remember, is a function of lambda, and you get your theta. Uh, 